so I woke up this morning and for some reason I was like, do you know what I haven't done for a while? I haven't checked my YouTube analytics for this channel in ages. And so I was like, I'm just gonna check my YouTube analytics. Um, first thing I noticed, Night Shift didn't do that well. Uh, normally my videos would get over 100 views in 24 hours, but Night Shift hasn't, uh, which is a little disappointing. And I was like, for a moment, I was like, that's weird. It, like, Night Shift is a great title in my opinion for a series or for a video. The thumbnail is pretty good. Why didn't it do very well? And then I thought more and I was like, well, I guess Night Shift is a cool title, but like it doesn't tell you anything about the video. And so people probably didn't click it because they didn't really know what it was. Like, what's an hour long video called Night Shift gonna be? You, 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 you just don't know. Whereas if a, an hour long video called just scrolling through the slice of life tags on my anime list for an hour, you know what you're getting into, and so you might want to click it. Like, even though the thumbnail was solid, it didn't tell you anything about the video, and so people probably didn't want to click it because of that. That's that's my theory, at least. My other theory is that I probably released it at a bad time. Like the time of day you release videos, depend like changes like the amount of views you're gonna get. So I probably released it at a bad time of day. Um, <clears throat> so that aside. Uh, night, so Night Shift didn't do very well, and that kind of like scuppers my plans, is that the right word? Scuppers? Shatters? Ruins? My idea was to make it into a, uh, to sort of make Night Shift into a bit of a series, but if people didn't click a video called Night Shift, then they're definitely not going to click something called Night Shift 2, right, if they don't know what it is. So I'm going to have to actually come up with names for these videos, so that's going to suck. Names for these videos is difficult, um, but they'll, I suppose I'll just call the series Night Shift, and then each video will have its own title, and maybe I'll put Night Shift in the thumbnail. Or maybe I just color code the thumbnails so that everything Night Shift has like a yellow border or something. I don't know, I haven't decided yet, but something like that. So that was the first thing I noticed, and we'll talk more about what this series is in a second, right, in the next clip I guess. But uh. That was the first thing I noticed. The second thing I noticed when I went on my analytics page is I just hit 500 subscribers. And I was like, how? Why? What? Why? <laughs> and so I was like trying to find out where all these subscribers are coming from. I couldn't figure it out. It just seems like they're just appearing. I thought at first like, oh, it must be because of that like weird core, internet core playlist I made or whatever. Like, oh, maybe people are subscribing from that and then they're not getting the content they like so maybe like in a in a few weeks they'll unsubscribe because they don't want to what they they thought they were going to get more playlists but it turns out that video actually hasn't gotten me much subscribers like you can you can see how many people subscribe via each video and that video go, has only gotten me like eight subscribers or something it seems like they're just appearing out of nowhere i have no idea where they're coming from i don't know where you guys are coming from but 500 subscribers that's pretty fucking epic bro that's a pretty epic moment so that was cool i saw the fight the number 500 subscribers i was like whoa it happened that's a that's a that's a, a cool thing to happen and then uh the next thing i saw was ages ago i was like i want to listen to every boris album you know boris the japanese bands they made like absolute ego flood like they they made like some doom metal stuff, they made some like post rock stuff, some like pop stuff, they're very prolific, very varied band, sort of like the type of band that I base my career off of where it's like they put out an album just like every year and they've been doing it forever and each album is just like in a completely different genre from the last but they're all good, like and some of them are really experimental and some of them are really like pop, that's like the band Boris is. If you don't know them, you should definitely check them out. But I, I wanted to listen to every Boris album. And uh, I went on YouTube and I was like, why isn't there a playlist that just has every Boris album in order? So I was like, I will make that playlist. And I made that playlist ages ago. And then I completely forgot about it. I was like, I'll make that playlist just in case anyone ever is looking to do the same thing I did and just look up every Boris album. And I saw on my analytics that playlist has like, 3,300 views. I didn't even know you could see how many people have viewed your playlist, but apparently you can, and that one has 3,300 and something. 
that's fucking sick. I'm very happy about that. People, I did something, I did a service. You know, I did, I was like, I wish this existed. Let me do it. And I did it, and people are using it. That makes me very happy. Um, so that's cool. Was there anything else I noticed? No, that was pretty much all the interesting things I noticed on my analytics page. So, uh, was there anything else that I know? Anyway. And to talk about a little bit of meta, what is it that you're actually watching, what's going on right now? So, where do I even begin with this? Um, I guess I start with yesterday. May no, maybe I start with my plans, my idea, my grand scheme. So my grand scheme is this. I want to make breakfast videos. They might not be breakfast videos, they might be lunch or dinner videos, but I want to make breakfast videos, I want to make meal videos. What do I mean? I want to make videos that solve a problem that I have personally. The problem that I have personally is I wake up in the morning and I've already seen all the fucking videos that have come out and like two or three videos have come out while I was asleep and they're all shit and they're not or they're not appropriate for breakfast because I need to watch something. I want to make videos where you can wake up, check your phone or your computer or whatever, check your computer, see, oh, no thank you's put out a new 45 minute long video. They're good, they're like decent videos to put on, like they're not boring, that's the idea at least, who knows how successful I'll actually be at that, but they're not boring, they're basically vlogs, right, uh, lifestyle vlogs, case of nice that, but for being an internet retailer. They're long, but not too long. It's not like a, like, you have to be dedicated, it's not like a, a, a sorted ramblings type of situation where it's like, okay, this is eight hours long. It's not that. They're like an hour, 45 minutes, an hour, maybe hour and a half max. So they're like long enough that you can put one on when you wake up, go make coffee, go make breakfast, go eat breakfast, and then you'll basically be, like, that takes about 45 minutes to an hour for me to do all of that stuff. Um, and like it's it's good enough that it's long enough that you don't run out of content for that period of your life and then you can once you've eaten breakfast your day can begin right and you can do stuff that isn't watching me talk about shit so the idea is that it's content for that period of life where you just need something to put on and uh it needs to be of decent quality but not like to require too much attention I don't want it to have too much of a visual component because it needs to be something that you can just have on in the background while you're cooking or eating. So you don't, like, it shouldn't be something where you have to read text on the screen, for example. Um, that's the, the niche I'm trying to capture. So something you can do when you sort of wake up or when you're going to cook dinner or something like that that you can put on and uh, you, you sort of can, like, semi-focus on it. It'll be sort of white noise in the background and uh, mildly entertaining. That's the idea behind this series. Um, oh shit, something's going wrong with my computer. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, so the, the, the idea is, what if there was an insomnia analysis every day? Do you know what I'm doing right now? I'm deleting Counter-Strike off my computer. Why? Why am I deleting Counter-Strike? Why am I uninstalling Counter-Strike right now? Not because I don't love CSGO. Great game. My favourite game, in fact. Uh, great game. Haven't been playing it much these days, but it is uh, a great game. Um, so, why am I deleting it off my computer? Well, for the simple fact that this computer only has 250 gigs of storage on it. Um, and CSGO, uh, with all the maps that I have installed and everything, is uh, quite big. It's I, I don't know exactly how many gigabytes it is, but it's quite big. It takes up a lot of space. Um, and I simply don't have the space for it anymore. Now this fella, I can easily just unscrew one screw take out the hard drive, I mean this already has a one terabyte hard drive so um, I don't think I will need to upgrade the hard drive on that for a long time. I mean it actually has an SSD, one terabyte SSD, I think, I think it's one terabyte. Um, what is it? F, F, D, F, U, D, D, F, 
That's it. DF. Um, okay, it's not one terabyte, I don't think. I think it's half a terabyte. But 500 gigabytes. That's plenty for me on this computer. More than this. 100 pounds? 2,000 pounds. 100 pounds? 2,000 pounds. Come on. Come on. It's just absurd. And the other thing is, if I need to update grade this, I can just take the hard drive out and put a bigger one in. When I bought this, I didn't think I'd need that much storage, because I'm only going to make music on it. But uh, I've been making more and more videos on it, and videos take up a lot of space. But uh, there's no way to increase that. You can't. You have to have it. You just have to have in the past bought a bigger one. You can't upgrade it, the, the hard drive, which is fucking stupid. And so here I am, de sorry, deleting Counter-Strike off my fucking computer, empty trash, done. Just so that I have 56 gigabytes available. Why do I need 56 gigabytes available? No, fucking, why is this still taking up space? Hold on a minute. Strange things are happening. I don't, I don't know what's going on. I might need to restart, but um, in fact, I'm I'm gonna restart my computer. It's it's not showing up that it's deleted, but I'm pretty sure I just deleted it. I can reinstall it when I need to reinstall it. Not a problem. I feel like since I've hit 500 subscribers, I've just been sort of forced to take this channel not seriously, but just like put some actual thought into it. I know I've done that before. I've made like thought videos where I put effort into them, but I've been thinking like. This channel is now a thing that is, like, to me, 500 subscribers is a real number, and it's like, maybe I should be trying to engage those people so they actually have something to enjoy. Maybe I should be trying to, you know, make decent videos. So, I thought, uh, I'll start doing some market research, uh, because that's what you do, right? You do market research, and, uh, I, I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch, who's the, like, most technically proficient? vlogger because this is the thing this all came from the idea of like what if i turn this into a daily vlog i don't think i'm going to do that anymore i might explain why later but uh like what if i turn this into a daily vlog would that be interesting would that be like a good idea breakfast content i think i said that before already right um like would that be something that people would want to watch if it would be something that i wanted to make that's more important really be something that i'd be interested in making how would i go about doing it in a way that was like not shit and so I was like, who's the most proficient, technically proficient daily vlogger? Casey Neistat, of course. He's like, you know, he's an actual filmmaker who transitioned into vlogging. So he, he's like, and he evolved the style. I don't need to explain why Casey Neistat is technically proficient. So I went and watched a bunch of his videos and like took notes. I didn't write anything down, but I took notes in my head of like, how does he structure his videos? So it got me thinking about how his style is really not very applicable to me. So firstly, his videos are all about like short, snappy, condensed, um, very uh, tight, tight videos, right? Which is good if you're if you're good at filmmaking, you make things tight. I, uh, but that works for his style, and it got me thinking about the three different types of uh, YouTubing. Uh, there might be more. I might add um, new types if I think of them. But I could. While I was in the shower just now, I thought of this. Three different types. There's three different things you can do, have a YouTube video be about. Um, now, I also when I was looking at Casey Neistat's channel, I I sorted by most popular because I was like, that will give me a good overview of like what his most popular videos are. You know, I'll, I'll sort by most popular. So I looked down, and. Um, uh, most of the stuff that is most popular, it's because it ha he's just hauling his wife out. Like, he's just, oh, there's five videos, all of them have his wife in a swimsuit in the thumbnail. Hmm, I wonder why those are most popular. Uh, like, that's the sort of thing. Or they just have some outrageous title, like, earning a million dollars in a day. Uh, I dipped a Rolex in solid gold, something like that. Like, though, I think it's an Apple Watch, but he, like, he does titles like that. These are things I can't do, of course. Not, nor would I really want to. Um, so, again, this this got me thinking. Why is he able to do stuff like that? Because he is type one YouTuber. So here are the three types of YouTuber. Um, oh, the other the other thing about um, Casey Neistat's titles is that they're normally about a tiny little sliver of the video. So, for example, one I watched was um, 
it was called something like uh, "This is unforgivable, United Airlines," or or, or "For shame, United Air shame on you, United Airlines." I think is what it was called. And I was like, "Oh, that's a good that title." Uh, I wonder what the fuck this video is about. So I clicked on it, and 99% of the video is about something completely different. There's a tiny bit in the middle where he talks about uh, United Airlines, literally for about one minute out of a 15 minute video or something, right? And you may have noticed this video is called The Three Types of YouTuber or something like that. I don't know exactly what I'm gonna title it, but something about this, that's, yeah, do you see? Do you see I'm doing it? I'm doing the reference. Uh, I, thought it was, I thought it'd be kind of funny. Anyway, <laughs> um, so the three types of YouTuber you, or YouTube video. The three types of YouTube video, you can either make a video about doing something, about being something, or about saying something. So, uh, Casey Neistat, his videos are all about doing something, right? If you watch his videos, they all tell a narrative where he goes to somewhere, talks to someone, um, creates something, fixes something, buys something. It's all about doing something. Every single one of his videos is very propelled by the, here is an activity that needs doing. The first section of the video is why, what is the activity and why do we need to do it? The second part of the video is him doing it. And the third part of the video is always the results of what happens. So for example, um, I just got sent a new one wheel or um, hoverboard or electric bike or boosted board in the mail. Here's the, the thing. That's part one. Part two, let's go test it outside. Goes test it outside. Part, and act three, here's the results of the test. It was pretty good. Also, maybe something unrelated where I go and talk to uh, a recurring character. That's a common type of thing. Or, for example, um, I need to go from this place to this place. Here's the journey and what I did. Like, it's all about doing something. He very rarely makes videos about saying something or being something. Um, so what are those two types of videos? He does sometimes make saying something videos, but uh, what are the other ty two types? So videos that are about being something is where you are the, you are, your, the existence, like the fact that you, you are something, is the, the, the source of entertainment. So uh, a good example of this would be those videos of like, lawyer reacts to so-and-so, doctor reacts to so-and-so. So like Legal Eagle, for example, would be a being something type of channel. Or um, cooking videos are oftentimes being something channels because the appeal of the video is just watching a chef who's good. Um, you know, video, or everything with celebrities in it is a being something type of video. Um, there were other types of being something type of videos. We'll get into those in a second. Um, but next is saying something type of video. So I think my videos kind of fall more into this category. This is all like a spectrum, really, more than an like a categorical thing. I should have introduced it really as a spectrum because it's, it's not so much that each video fits perfectly into one, but it's, you know, everything's kind of in between. But those are like, it's like a triangle where you can make, I don't know, I don't know, I'm just making this up on the spot. Um, but the saying something videos is like, uh, uh, you, uh, video essays. Video essays would be a perfect example of a saying something type video, um, or, or video essays. Dark Souls is boring and here's why. And then you have a minute, you have, you're here. I'm saying why Dark Souls, um, Grand Theft Auto is the greatest video game of all time, and then a long, you know, these sorts of video, a video essay type of things. Um, uh, comedians are also, like, stand-up comedy and similar types of videos, uh, so like Leo Vader, I don't know if anyone knows who Leo Vader is, but Leo Vader's videos would be in saying something, um, you know, jokes, these are the sorts of, uh, saying something type of videos. Um, I think I fall in between being and saying. I very rarely do things in my videos. Sometimes I do. Like recently, I did uh, going through the slice of life tags in my anime list, or um, do uh, you know stuff like that. But the the do uh, doing is like difficult when you're a hikikomori. <laughs> but being and saying are the things I do. So um, because I'm, if we look back to there's this YouTuber ages ago. I don't know if anyone remembers some anime YouTuber who had a second channel. I don't remember their name, but um. They, their videos were all about, uh, mostly pretending to be about saying something, but almost all of them were about being something, and that was being a person who lives that sort of lifestyle. Um, it was a, a lifestyle vlog, so rather than doing stuff like, you know, like Casey Neistat would do, he, he wouldn't, even though his videos are partially about, this is the lifestyle I live, they always tell us a narrative. So even when it's like, I bought my son a yacht, right? Part of the appeal of that is, you're so rich you can afford a yacht, not really to me though, the appeal of the video is really, 
here's the story of my son and like you know here's the whole narrative of what the fuck happened why it's more complicated than the title lets on it's not really about here I am look at me I'm someone who's really rich whereas the videos by this random anime youtuber I forget the name of um they're all about I'm saying something right like I'm probably saying some bullshit about I don't know bathos or something like that but really it's the the image of me you know and uh, essentially neat except I make my I like I can live this lifestyle and here I am in my full glory just like come hang out with me that's sort of the appeal it's a similar appeal to like slice of life anime and you know me I fucking love slice of life anime and so I love slice of life content in general and that's what I want to make I naturally will just gravitate towards slice of life anything um, there's this particular appeal it doesn't have a name it's almost like you could almost call it um, sort of a verisimilitudinous friendship but it's not really that because it's or maybe vicarious friendship would be better but none of these are those quite parasocial relationships like none of these are all like terms they're all like sitting here but they're not like like it's over here it's just outside the bubble of what can be described by those terms it's just slice of life it's like its own appeal it's similar to those things but it's also distinct it's it's a it's more comfy it's more wholesome it's more vibes based i suppose um it's less like uh interpersonal and more observational i suppose you could call it that's that's what i'm trying to do that's what i always appear uh, like gravitate towards in media is that sort of thing that's what a good like let's play series is about that's what a good vlogging series is about to me at least that's the appeal that's what a good arrow gay is about that's well not all of them but like a moe gay like the one i'm playing right now which i've forgotten the name of or i would tell you um uh that's what a good slice of life anime is about all of these you know you know what i'm trying to say i think i made my point the three types of videos doing being saying um i don't do much but I be saying shit. <laughs> that's that's how I'm ending this segment. Okay, <laughs> brain came up with that. That's how I'm ending the segment. Ending the segment with I don't do much, but I do be saying shit. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> I don't do much, but I be saying shit. Hey guys, and welcome back to Alcohol on Mondays, the only show where I drink alcohol on Mondays. Um, we're joined here in the studio with Lil Crazy Bitch, my mother of the man. The first time appearing, I'm pretty sure first time appearing in one of my videos. We're joined over Discord. Um, so right here I have six beers, you can see them over here. I have six beers that I found in my local shop that I've never tried before. Um, well, I'm going to read you out the names and I'm going to have you decide which one I try first. They got some crazy names. Okay, first of all, first of all, we have uh, the Golden Champion, the Hopping Hare, yeah, I'll show them all to the camera. Okay, the Golden Champion, the Hopping Hare, uh, the Legendary Tanglefoot, that's the name of a beer. <laughs> <laughs> the legendary ta tango foot. <laughs> There's no way you're taking it. It's real, it's stuff. real, it's real, I swear. <laughs> Traditional golden ale, with legendary tango foot. We got uh, a ghost ship. Mm. We got uh, the thirsty ferret. And mm. finally, we have uh, Bishop's Finger. It needs to be legendary. The worst Tanglefoot. It's got to be Tanglefoot. Okay. Let's stand off with Tanglefoot. Let's crack this bitch open. So this is a uh, 5% alcohol. Traditional golden ale. Um, small good. I don't know how to do beer reviews. <laughs> no what idea. What does it smell like? It smell like beer. <laughs> <laughs> They're all beer smelling. I don't know the different. Take a little sip what it tastes like. Alright, let's take a little sip what it tastes like. Ooh. Tastes a little bit like beer. I suppose you guys get to see that failed clip 
of me trying to, to review all these fucking beers. I'm on the second beer now, the hopping hair. But like, it's been like, how long? Like two hours? And I've, I drank one more beer? Don't know why. Don't know why I'm drinking so slow. Maybe I, no, wait. Yeah, I've only, yeah, there's my tangled foot. Here's my hopping hair. I need to, I need to hurry up. This one's also really nice. Both really nice. This one's a bit... That one, the first one, very easy to drink. This one, a little more, like, um... Heavy, I guess. But the point is, you get to see the failed start of alcohol on Mondays. Um, because I decided not to do it. <laughs> um... There we go. I've decided not to do alcohol on Mondays because there's just not that much to say about beer. Like, during that first clip, I, you know, I said there's not that much to talk about with beer. So then I went and, like, watched an, ep an episode, like, two episodes of alcohol, and the original <coughs> Alcohol on Sundays by whatever weird anime YouTuber, I don't remember their name, but the the original one. And, um, I feel like, what's the strongest one? 5%, five, 5.4, five I think this is going to be the strongest one. Bishop's Finger. Um, but yeah, I went and rewatched two episodes of that, and that person, they talk about, like, it's all their favourite beers, it's nine of their favourite beers that they were viewing, so they have, like, a story, and uh, like, here's my, this beer, and here's why it's my favourite beer, or one of my nine favourite beers, whereas this is all beers I've never tried before, and, um, look at the colour on this, I mean, is that not just a beauty, beautiful? But yeah, these are all beers I've never tried before, so I don't have anything to, any stories to tell about them, or anything interesting, and, um, ooh, ooh, Wow. Wow. That's an interesting flavour. Ooh. Almost tastes like Marmite. That's a that's really nice. Well it's neat. <laughs> I don't have nice. Tastes a bit like Guinness almost. Weird. Never had a beer like this before. Bishop's Finger. What is it? Kentish Strong Ale. It is a strong flavour. Wow, that's a weird fucking beer. Anyway, but that's pretty much all I can say about that now. Like, there's nothing else to say, whereas in the original videos I was copying, everyone has a story. So, this is just a failed project um so you can just enjoy the knowledge that you've seen the first episode of a series that never uh made it to air i hope this like this should show people how dedicated i am because like my windows computer over there which is here this guy you can see it it says vn machine i wrote vn machine on on it it's sharpie well, that was the fucking plan, but it doesn't actually work very well <laughs> for VNs. Uh, I don't know why, uh, but it just is broken. The computer just is fucked. I need to do something with it. I need to spend a day fixing that computer, and I would be more okay with that if it was Linux, but it's Windows, and Windows is jank by like, it doesn't make any sense to me. So, I don't want to spend a day fixing that computer. Um, but that computer's fucked. And even if I wanted to, even if it worked, I can't find the charger right now. And the biggest problem with that computer is that the battery doesn't work. So it has to be plugged in to, to turn on. Like, you have to keep it plugged in because as soon as you unplug it, it just turns off instantly. 
uh, it has to be plugged in uh, because the battery doesn't work. I couldn't. I looked for like ten minutes and couldn't find the charger, so that's not an option. And why was I doing that? Because this visual novel, which I'm trying to play, um, hold on a second. Well, I I keep forgetting what it's called. Koini Sasi Water Test and like that cuts out. Ah, fucking, I don't remember. That. Uh, I I don't remember what this shit's called. Koini Kanmi. <laughs> oh my god. Koyama, there we go, that's the shortened version. Koyama. Koi ni kan mi osoite. Uh, or Koyama, I'm just gonna call it Koyama. So Koyama, which is like a nice moe game, I was trying to play uh, on my Mac. Why was I trying to play it on my Mac? Because it, it's, uh, it's a modern visual novel. It came out in 2017, or uh, 2018, 2017, somewhere around that time. I think, oh, I think it came out in the, literally New Year's Day 2018. Um, so modern visual novel, which means that it makes this guy uh, chug a little bit, which is fine, like, it runs fine, but it like it runs hot, like it it makes it very hot, um, and so I I was like, I tried to I, first I downloaded it on my ThinkPad, and then I was like, it's getting a bit hot, I'm gonna put it on my Mac instead because that guy this has uh, doesn't you know it's a more modern computer it doesn't get as hot. Oh yeah, I've always almost finished my bishop bishop's finger. Finally, man, that is a, that is a beer, you know you're drinking that. Alright, let's go to, uh, let's go with the, um, this guy, the, the golden champion. Where's my fucking opener? Where the fuck's my opener? Ah, here it is. Hold on a second. Do you know what? We're gonna make this a video. We're gonna make this a real thing. Okay. We did it. So. Whew. So. It was running a little bit hot on my ThinkPad. Now the reason that happens is because I need to replace the thermal paste on it. I've talked about this before. To replace the thermal paste on the ThinkPad, you have to fully deconstruct the entire thing. You have to disassemble the entire thing. The CPU is... You, to access that, the CPU, you have to literally disassemble the entire thing. Like, completely. Um, and I'm just scared that I it won't work when I try and put it back together. And so I haven't done it. Uh, I think I'm, I'm going closer and closer to... I just need to call up a... Um, like an IT store, like a computer repair store, and be like, hey, I know what needs doing, but I'm too scared to do it, can you guys do it for me? And just do it. But, that aside, I thought, it's running a bit hot on here, I'll just transfer it over to my Mac, everything will be fine. Now remember, this is a, all visual novels pretty much did, uh, just run in Windows, and I have to run them in Wine. And Wine is weird on Mac. Especially my Mac. Something's wrong with my Mac where it won't update. And I don't know why. But that's that's another issue. What I'm trying to say is, put it on my Mac and continued reading. Everything was going fine. Until I reached the OP. If you've never played a visual novel before, you might be surprised that visual novels have OPs. They do have OPs. I reached the OP and it would just crash every time. I wouldn't play the OP. This is actually quite a common problem when running visual novels in Wine, because they all use weird video codecs. I don't know why, there's probably some technical reason that I don't understand. Uh, didn't work on my Mac, tried a bunch of stuff, wouldn't work, so I thought I would just try running it 
on here. The video played with no sound, but the video played, but then after the video stopped playing, it wouldn't continue playing. Very strange. Um, like as in like once the OP ended, the that you couldn't continue. The game would just like not respond no matter what you did. You, um, thankfully, now this is this is where it gets into. This is the point of the story. So I was like, "Fuck! What the fuck do I do?" And in an act of desperation. I started going through the most. I started going through menus. I found a menu that was engine config, engine config, right? And I was like, maybe something in here will save me. And I scroll right to the end of the engine config menu, and in a tiny little drop down, right at the end, in a tiny obscure corner of the menu, there's compatibility options, and I'm thinking, this is this is it. If if my if I am if I am to be saved, this is where my savior lies. There's compatibility options, and in the compatibility options, some person, one dev probably, has put in disable video. Thank fuck. <laughs> and I did it. I disabled the video, and it works. It just skips straight past the OP. I'm just going to go look up the OP on YouTube right now because I've never heard it yet. So uh, I, I'm going to go look it up right now so I can listen to the OP and it will be like nothing ever went wrong. Thank, thank you, Japanese dev of this visual novel who put a disable video option in the compatibility settings. I really hope that that option is also available in the sequel. I really hope it's also available in the sequel so I can play that too. Ah. Uh, God send. These are the struggles I go through to play visual novels. Three computers, context menus, wine tricks downloads, love filter, all type of shit, just to get my fucking Moe fix. Most people never have to deal with this. They just, you know, play their visual novels. But I use fucking Linux and my Windows computer doesn't fucking work. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to fucking make this easier for myself, you know? Alright, I'm gonna go listen to this OP and then I'll play this on my Mac because I suppose I can just enable the option. It'll be good, yeah. This, this is the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. This is like... This is the worst thing I've ever seen. This is actually genuinely the worst thing I've ever seen in my entire life. This has like 2 million views or something. This is worse than Anime Crimes Division. This is a, this is just just the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. The voice the animation's great. Shout out to the animators as usual. The animators doing a great job on terrible shows is like the biggest travesty. I feel terrible that they had to work on something so awful. Although according to the views um well, I don't know, according to the rapidly dwindling views, it seems uh I don't know, maybe maybe people agree with me. Who knows? But uh what was I saying? Yeah, this is just the worst thing I've ever seen. If you don't know what this is, by the way, there's a channel called Otaku uh, Otaku Versus, or I guess Otaku VS, and a long time ago they used to make anime videos, and the anime videos they made were um, generic, fine, you know, fine. They were fine. They, they weren't particularly interesting, uh, but fine. Anyway, um, and then, like, at, a cert at some point, they were just, like, rebranded themselves, and they were like, um, we're now, we now have an anime girl mascot called Otachan, right, which isn't even an original name, there's already a character called, there's already a character called Otachan in Japan, but whatever, um, <laughs> We now have this character called... This is when I unsubscribed from them. I, I don't know why I subscribed from them in the first place, because they weren't particularly good, but... Um, 
uh, yeah, basically, they were like, now we have an anime mascot called Ota Chen, who's like this purple haired girl. I think she was like a VTuber at the start of things, like that's how they did it. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, as you can see. So like, like they, they did her as a VTuber at first, and it looked, it, oh, I don't know. It's just awful. It just looks terrible. It's not good. But the voice acting is the worst thing about it. Whoever they got to voice actress, act this character is just the most obnoxious, most cl typical exemplar of all the worst things in English anime voice acting possible. Just unbearably awful. Then eventually they started, I don't know what they started doing. I, I stopped paying attention. But randomly I got one of their videos recommended to me. Um, and I was like, it, it was this one. We would like anime dating sims that ruined our childhood. And I was like, I like anime dating sims. Um, and I clicked on it and I was instantly struck by this is the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. This is just awful. And so I clicked on the channel. Just, oh my God, this is, it's so bad. It's so, it's so bad. It's so bad. This is, this is like, this is like, you know, it's literally... Oh, I've watched I've watched some anime. I'm gonna make my own anime. Is this a Mal? Is this a Mal? I want to see someone's Mal. I want to see someone who runs this as Mal, so that I can find out why they have such shit taste. Come on, please, give me anything. Give me anything. No, this is there's not shit. There's not shit. You're gonna work on something for three to four months, and you're scared. So scared, no one's gonna fuck with it. Well, I'm. I don't fuck with it. Fuck you. It's ter the animation is wonderful. Listen, the animation, it's very well. Well, this first episode isn't so well animated, but I've seen other clips. Of, for I've seen, it's it like you for being animated by what I assume is like uh, one or two people, it could pass as like a decent. Well, I mean, it's a decent web anime. Like they exist. Web, web anime do exist in Japan. You didn't invent that. Um... <clears throat> It's a pretty obvious next step from, hey, we like anime, to let's make our own anime and put it on the internet. There's a, there's a bunch of them on Nico Nico. Uh, they're not allowed on Mal, though, because they're not official. Well, some of them are. It's weird. I don't. It's weird how Mal works. Like, certain things aren't allowed. Like, certain doujin stuff isn't allowed. So you, you won't find most web anime on Mal. But for some reason, you can find some, like, I don't know. It's very strange. Um, but I've seen some web anime, like Japanese web anime, and firstly, some of them, most of them, are like, aren't particularly well animated, like, um, I mean, I suppose some are, but it, it varies, it varies, it varies wildly, um, quality-wise, but most of them are, like, gag comedies, because that's, like, the obvious thing to do when you have no budget, is to make a gag comedy, which is also what Otaku Versus tried to do, clearly. Um, now, the difference being... <laughs> Some of them, some of those ones are funny. <laughs> some of the Japanese ones have jokes in them that land. <laughs> this is the worst. Oh my god! And like, this has been said before. The standard for voice acting in Japan is just so much higher than in the West. Like, it's just on. Uh, even if the show was good, like, even if it, the jokes landed, even if the anim well, the animation was really good, but even if the character design was mildly interesting, even if the writing was mildly interesting, whatever, I still wouldn't be able to watch this piece of shit because the fucking voice acting is just so bad. Hire a different voice actress, please. In fact, do you know what? Do you know what? They did an episode. They did this, right? I think this is it. Um... Give me a second. Yeah, see, this is like a series of shorts. This is more like what a typical Japanese web anime looks like. Like, I've seen... This is this is generally what they look like. Where it's like very limited animation. And it's done by a Japanese voice actress. And it's actually decent. It's not like a 10 out of 10 or anything. It's got some, it's got some memes in it. Um, see, there was Pepe. That's a meme, right? Pepe, that's a meme you guys have heard of. Instead of... Hey, if we just do referential humour, we don't have to write our own jokes. We just put a reference to something that you already know and then you think it's funny because you're a fucking Redditor. But, like, it's actually watchable because the even though the animation is much more limited, the VA is, like, good and has, like, good comedic timing. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah, this is like the epitome of Reddit popular. This Otaku vs. Epitome of Reddit popular anime fandom. Um, but other than that, uh, Hayden, Lies, Hayden Loves Anime released a new video today as well about Magipoka. Is that what it's called? Magikaru Poka and that one, right? Um, here, Magipoka. Great video. You should go watch this video. If, you, if you're subscribed to Otaku vs. or The Anime Man or The Trash Taste Podcast or Gigak or any of these people, what I want you to do I want you to go ahead and unsubscribe from all of those. Sea Dog VA, um, you know, all the other ones. Just unsubscribe from them. Just go- goodbye. Bye bye. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to, to take your mouse, you're going to click on Hayden Loves Anime, and you can go subscribe here. Because this is someone who's seen, uh, if I remember correctly, 2,500 shows on Mal, <coughs> knows their motherfucking shit, and makes good videos. Like, not only knows their shit about anime, but also makes entertaining videos. And then what you're going to want to do is you want to go, go up here. You're going to want to type in KYDB. You're going to want to type here KYDB. And you're going to want to subscribe to KYDB. And then you're going to go and watch their Kimono Friends 2 two-hour-long video. You're going to want to go and watch their two-hour-long video about the fucking history and impact of Kimono Friends Season 2, which is one of the best videos on this goddamn cursed website, and it only has 2,000 views, whereas fucking Otachan, whatever, bullshit, fucking... Fuck, I hate humans. I hate them so much. They don't know anything. They watch bad thing. Everyone watch bad thing. Only I watch good thing. Everyone watch bad thing. My opinion on everything is fuck you, like better things. Fuck you, like better things. Oh, I suppose while we're here, you're also going to, although this is probably not so relevant for you guys, because I assume you already have already done it, but if you go, you're going to want to go in and type in Princess, type it properly, Princess Plunder Phonics. You're going to want to go ahead and type in Pin Pepper Phonic, and you're going to go and watch their Ojimajo Doemi reviews, and this show, which I can't say the title of, <laughs> <laughs> That's how this is how you know it's the best anime channel on YouTube. Like calling a show this is just the best name of all time. Come on. Um <clears throat> yeah, you're gonna go ahead and wanna watch some of their videos because they're basically the best uh anime videos. Um and then oh who's this? Who's this over here? Oh oh who's this handsome fellow? Who's this handsome fellow? <laughs> and then you're gonna go ahead and watch uh Watch all of my videos, and then you've come full circle. Oh yeah, I did make anime videos. Um, these ones are decent. <laughs> you don't need to watch uh, some of the later ones. Um, this is kind of a funny video of me being a bit manic. <clears throat> I should finish 2005. Maybe I, maybe I do that. Maybe I do that now. Anyway, sorry, getting a little off topic here. Um, go go subscribe to the three good anime YouTubers: Hayden loves anime, Princess Plunderphonics, and KYDB, and then ignore everyone else.